Hello, welcome back to my channel. My name is Kristen and I post videos mostly about personal finance with a couple other random topics sprinkled in here and there. Today I want to talk to you about five things that are essential to your success if you want to pay off your debt and start moving towards a life of financial freedom. I know so many of you are looking to get out of debt, save some money, get your finances back on track, and some of these are going to be harder than others, but all of them are integral to your success. So if you're already in the middle of a debt-free journey or you're considering getting started, then stick around for this video. Okay guys, if you love videos about functional personal finance, things that you can actually understand and put into practice in your own life today, I hope you'll consider subscribing to my channel. Don't forget to click that bell so you can be notified each time I post a new video. So let's go ahead and get started. Number one is hands down, you have to start living on a budget. I know, I know, I know. The B word makes you cringe, right? A budget can feel so scary for so many of us, especially if you're not used to living on a budget. Here's the thing. We get scared of a budget because a budget makes us feel like we are going to be deprived, like we are going to be living without and it makes us feel like we're not going to be able to spend our money that we work so hard for, right? Does that sound like you? But I'm here to tell you that a budget is the exact opposite. A budget does not have to mean a very small budget. You might have a very large budget depending on your income. But here's the thing, a budget is simply knowing and being aware and planning your spending. A budget is about being intentional with how you spend your money and knowing where every single dollar goes. So have you ever felt like you get paid and all of a sudden your money is gone and you think to yourself, where did that even go? What did I buy? What did I do? If that sounds familiar to you, then you definitely need to be living on a budget. I have a ton of free budgeting resources on my website, lifeofstones.com. I'm going to link them down below. I have some free templates. I even have a free email course to help you learn how to budget because it truly is the fundamental step of financial freedom. Number two, find someone to hold you accountable. If you are married, then of course your spouse will be your accountability partner. It's so important to do this together because that way you can hold each other accountable, you can make plans and goals together and continue to support one another as you're working towards those goals. It's so important to have somebody to help lift you up when you're feeling down or you're stumbling or you're having a hard time. That other person is there to support and encourage and remind you why you started this process in the first place. So what do you do if you're not married? Well, if you have a steady boyfriend or girlfriend and they're living and you combine your expenses already, then they can be your accountability partner, no problem. And if you're single, all you need to do is find a trusted individual in your life that you know wants the same for you as you do for yourself. So perhaps it's a parent or an aunt or an uncle or even just a really close friend. I suggest this person probably be in a better financial position than you are yourself. That way they're in a great position to be a mentor for you and they can draw on their own experience to really help you work towards your goals. This has to be a person that you trust, that you're in contact with regularly, that you know is really going to call you on your crap. It has to be someone who is comfortable enough with you to let you know when you're going off course or let you know when you're making a mistake and be able to help reel you back in and get you back on track. The third habit that's so important when you're embarking on a debt-free journey is stop using credit. For the love of God, stop using your credit card. Don't go out and lease a new car, don't go out and buy a new car, don't go out and buy a new house, don't go out on a shopping spree and put it on credit. When we started our journey, we followed Dave Ramsey and his baby steps. 
I wouldn't consider myself a Dave Ramsey purist, but we do follow basic layout of his plan because I think it's a great plan. I think it's a great plan for anybody, no matter where you are on your financial journey. I'll link a couple of his books down below that we found incredibly helpful when we got started. But if you don't want to follow Dave Ramsey, that's okay. You don't have to cut up every single credit card you own if that's not what you want to do. But the point of cutting up the credit cards is really to force you to change your habits. So many people are addicted to their credit cards and are used to overspending on credit and really living beyond your means because if you're paying for things on a credit card that you don't have the money for, then you can't afford it and you should not be buying it. And I know that sucks. I know that's hard to hear sometimes. I felt the exact same way. What we did personally was we cut up every single credit card except one. This is our main credit card we've had for a very long time. We have a low rate. We trust them. They've really done right by us over the years. We use it very minimally. We simply put our gas on it and a couple of auto pay bills each month. It's paid off every two weeks when we get our paychecks. And cutting up all of our other credit cards really allowed us to break that cycle. Because if you are consistently charging on credit cards, it really is very, very difficult to get ahead. You'll be paying and you're paying some balance and some interest and then to turn around and just charge more that week on that card, it doesn't make any sense. So if you wanna get out of debt, it's so important to stop using credit. Not just credit cards, but any credit no extra loans, and really try to get used to using a cash system such as the cash envelope system or even just using your debit card each time instead of a credit card can really help you change those habits. And I think you'll start to see some real progress. Number four that will be very beneficial to you when trying to pay off debt is to decrease your expenses. It's amazing to me how much we have decreased our expenses over the past year and a half of paying off debt. I remember trying to start a budget years ago thinking, okay, we've cut everything there is to cut. What more can we do? We cannot live on any less. But I was so wrong. I can see now that my head really wasn't in the game back then because I was considering so many things essential when they're really not. I mean, your essentials are shelter, utilities, food, and transportation. Your essentials are not cable and a nicer car and weekly happy hours. To cut your expenses, it's really important that you get honest with yourself. You really have to figure out what is an essential in your life and what is non-negotiable and make sure you put those in your budget and you plan for those expenses. Other things are really just wants. You may not wanna hear it, but wants are not priority when you're on a debt-free journey. If you really truly wanna get out of debt and you want to do it quickly, you have to get rid of the things that are not essential in your life. Free up that room in your budget that you can put that extra money towards debt. I have a couple other videos, I will link them down below that will show you how to drastically cut your food budget. We found an extra five, $600 once I got super serious about planning our meals and cutting our food budget and consuming less as a family. And I know you can do the same. And tip number five, my last tip for you today, is to increase your income. I know that can seem difficult, Focusing all your energy to pay off debt and decrease your expenses is going to give you such momentum on this journey. And when you combine that with raising your income over time, you're going to get your debt paid off so much faster. Nowadays, we're fortunate because of the internet and phones and apps, we have so many different ways that we can earn some extra bucks. If you're not able to pick up some extra shifts or some overtime or even a second part-time job, consider finding a side hustle, something that you do on the side that can bring you in a couple extra bucks each week. This can be anything from walking dogs to driving for Uber to delivering food to people to freelance writing, really your possibilities are endless. Make sure when you make this extra money, you use that to go right towards your debt and it's really going to exponentially increase the amount of debt that you can pay off in a shorter amount of time. 
Those are my five tips for you today. I hope you find this video useful. Remember to give yourself grace. It takes a ton of consistency and it can be really tough. So be sure to be patient with yourself and just get back up if you fall. If you need some encouragement, reach out below in the comments and I'm here for you. I'm cheering for you. I know you can pay off your debt. So if you like this video, please consider subscribing to my channel for more content like this. Thank you so much for watching and I hope to see you back here real soon.